talking to, so I don't forget that. Wait, is that doing it? It's important. Yes, recording. All right, cool. So, um, you guys, I want to introduce Christina to you. Many of you are new on the call tonight, and many of you have been around, so some of you may know her. Um, if you don't, you may recognize that I am Team Beachbody movement that kind of swept social media. <laughs> when was that? That was back right before our um, Super Saturday, our last Super Saturday, and that brilliant thing was was all Christina, and I mean, it made the whole network so excited and. I took part in it and I loved it. It reignited my fire. So that was awesome. She is a superstar diamond in this business, a um, million club member. She's on the cab. So that's the coach advisory board for those that don't know what that is. Um, and what I think is super cool. And some of the folks on this team have pointed out is that you do this with your sister. And so there's so many people who talk about how like, Oh, I don't know many people, but like you guys were pulling from the same pool of people at first. <laughs> and I think also we have a lot of busy moms who work full-time jobs and you know, Christina can relate there too. She was a lawyer. She's got two kiddos at home. Now she has a really super cute puppy at home. Um, looks exactly like a teddy bear, <laughs> um, but we're really lucky to have her tonight. And, um, you know, we, we, we chatted a little bit at the elite party down in Punta Cana. And, and then I just was like, I have to ask her to do this for us because we love her so much and she's so down to earth and awesome. So we're lucky to have her and I'm going to let her kind of take it away. Um, and we'll go ahead and get started. Let me to unmute you or you got, you got this. She's All right. All right. I got it. Um, thank you, Joan. I appreciate you guys having me on. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Yes? Okay, good. Awesome. Well, it's an absolute honor to talk to you guys tonight. Um, you know, I always get nervous when I do these calls, especially if I'm not too familiar with the organization, but I love Joan and I fell in love with her in Punta Cana. And so I hope I get to connect with you guys tonight um, because it is um, this is something I love to do because Hopefully, at the end of this call, you'll realize how much I'm obsessed with this business, how much I love it. I'm super incredibly passionate about it and helping others to see the potential in the business and also see the potential for themselves in this business because I think unlike other opportunities um, and or any other kind of job that you can get, this business kind of fills the gap in so many things that life has to offer, whether it's financial, physical, you know, the community support, the, the love, the recognition that you get. There's so many facets to this business that make it special. And that's why I feel like it's kind of my responsibility and job to not only help people see it for themselves and to join, but also once people join, like you guys, um, that you really, really take it and run with it because, um, you know, it's so special. You don't want to hold it in. So I want you guys to, by the end of this call, understand what I feel are the key kind of pieces to this business to going all in. So I have a, actually a little presentation that I want to do for you guys where I call, I call it what it really means to go all in in your team beach body business. And hopefully you'll get some nuggets from it. Um, and also get fired up because summit is right around the corner. And so it's always really, really good to have momentum heading into summit. Am I right? Who's going to summit? Raise your hand. Okay, good. So I can't wait to meet you guys there. But um, I'll share a little bit of my story and then I'll get into my presentation. And of course, if there's uh, questions at the end, I will be more than happy to answer them. So like Joan said, I came into this business um, quite a while ago, seven years in August. So August is my seven year anniversary. Like she said, my sister um, is my sponsor. Uh, my older sister, five and a half years older, although she's jacked and ripped. Um, she looks like she's 25 and I'm totally jelly of that. But she came into the business because our best friend lent her P90X and it was at a time when she had just had her son and needed something to get back into, say, into shape. If you know my sister and you follow her, you know she is like insane fit girl. So of course she went all in with P90X and got incredible results. And I watched her and I was watching her. At the time I was an attorney um, I had had my daughter Marley and after Marley was born I was 
completely consumed with two things with number one being her mom and not you know killing her and, and keeping her alive and then number two was being an attorney and not getting fired at, at that job and those two things were very difficult to do at the same time and so there was no time for me in my head to get in shape to be healthy to do any of those things that i was watching my sister do um, but then i saw her do it again with her second baby jake and insanity and she got even in better shape with insanity after having Jake and it was at the time that I got pregnant with DJ my son so I saw this you know this kind of you know transformation occur one more time and for whatever reason it was thank thankfully during my pregnancy with DJ that something just clicked for me and I said you know what I got to drop the excuses I'm, I, you know, my time is never, I'm never going to have more than 24 hours in a day, right? I'm always going to be having constriction with time and energy because of the career I chose and having kids and having a family. So I either drop the excuses and get it done or live miserable for the rest of my life because I literally was miserable. So I made a decision that when DJ was born, I was going to get in shape again and I was going to ask my sister for help. Lo and behold, when DJ was four months old, the Beachbody business opportunity presented itself to my sister on social media. It was like the perfect timing of this to happen. Even though I didn't want anything to do with the business, it seemed like there was some kind of universe intervening in this because I wanted to get in shape. I knew that I had to do it by eating healthy and, and, um, and, and working out. I wasn't going to do any like crazy cleanses. All that was very popular here in Miami at the time. I needed to do this the right way. And so there I went with Shakeology. She presented Shakeology to me. I started drinking it, signed up for the discount. And within four or five months, I had already lost 65 pounds. Like it was insane. I dropped all of this baby weight and felt incredible. And people started asking me and, you know, make condense my story just a little bit, but it was at a super Saturday that I went with my sister. It was actually the first super Saturday ever um, sat there listened just like i do now at every other super saturday just like you guys do at super saturday i soaked it in i i i saw that you know in order to hit success club you had to help at that, that time five people a month i mean i i think i could do that and if i would do that then i get to go on this trip right and i was like man you know we were drowning in debt we i obviously in a body that i hated before you know becoming um before my sister became a coach um I literally, we were losing our home. Credit card debt was at the time about 40,000. My law school loans were in the 80,000. It was just like overwhelming. And just sitting there listening to these coaches saying that they were paying down debt by helping people with these products that were already changing my life. I said, I got to give this a shot. And I decided right then and there that I was going to make Success Club my job. Just like when I was an attorney, building hours was my job right in order for me to get a paycheck in order for you know me to <clears throat> to have certain you know markers in my business as a lawyer which was building hours i was going to i was going to do that in my beach body business i was going to hit success club and back then in order to hit success club you had to recruit one coach a month Joan, were you in the business when this was a rule? Okay, no. So back then in the Stone Ages, when the dinosaurs roamed the planet, we had to sponsor one coach and share five bags of Shakeology every single month in order to hit Success Club. That was SC5 back then because there wasn't no two points. There wasn't challenge packs. So it was actually a little bit more difficult to hit Success Club back in the day. And so I, I got into a habit of at least sponsoring one coach right? So that's one tip that I'm going to give you guys tonight, even though it's not part of my presentation is, you know, a business, a healthy business is one where you're hitting success club, but an even healthier business is one that you're bringing coaches on, right? Because that's what makes your, your income grow. That's what makes, you know, success club will kind of give you a, you know, steady kind of income if you do it consistently. But if you want that income to start growing, you got to recruit, you got to bring coaches into the business. So I did that. And, um, make a long story real short i had various whys in the business and i'm going to talk about that during my presentation but i i made sure that whenever something was done whenever i accomplished a goal i would always ask myself what's next 
So my first goal was paying down our debt, right? And once I started doing that, and I, and I literally, you guys, it would wake me up in the morning to know that I could pay more than a minimum payment to my credit card, right? I don't know about you, but a lot of times we got we kind of get mixed up into comparing ourselves with other people who, who likes to play the comparison game. I guess who doesn't like to play the comparison game, but does it anyway, right? Raise your hand. I do it too. And you start seeing, you know, all these coaches making this income and that income and doing this, that, and the other. Well, to me, I kind of try to keep my blinders on when it comes to all this stuff. Because I'll never forget the day that I could pay $100 to that credit card that forever I was paying $25, right? And then I could pay $200 to that credit card that forever I was paying $25. To me, that was life-changing, right? So I always go back to that moment of, man, that elephant of debt was taken off of my shoulders because of this opportunity, right? So once I was able to start paying down our credit cards, I kept asking myself, what's next? What is it that you want, Christina? What are you chasing? And I would readjust my why all the time. And then my son, who's the best, he was diagnosed autistic when he was 18 months. And it didn't hit me right away, but then it did. And it was because of this opportunity that allowed me to open my eyes to the fact that I could be home with him and Marley and not at a job and I would be able to experience all his milestones, all his tantrums, everything, good, bad, ugly, if I was home with him. And this opportunity gave me those, those vision goggles to be able to imagine the day that that would become true. And so I got to work, you guys. It woke me up in the morning to, re to know that I was in control of that decision. That I, whether it was a year from, from that moment or two or three, I would still be able to accomplish that. And so I got to work. And if I show you guys would freak. If I would show you my income, the biggest jump that I had in my income as a coach came right after DJ was diagnosed. If that doesn't show you the power of the why, I don't know what does. So I'm going to say it now and I'm going to say it in a few minutes when I get into my presentation. If you don't know what you're chasing and you don't know why, then you are going to have a hell of a time growing this business. You gotta get clear on that, right? Now I'm gonna skip that because this is literally part of my presentation. But from then on, you guys, I kept asking myself, "What's next? What's next? What am I chasing, Christina? What is it that you want?" And it went to retiring from the practice of law. But on top of that, I couldn't just walk away from the practice of law because of DJ and my and with my firm, I I had amazing health insurance benefits. And if I were to step away from that it was going to be a huge problem for him and his benefits. And I would never have jeopardized that. So then I had to make enough money to be able to not only retire from the practice of law, but also be able to pay for Cobra insurance. Anybody know what that is? That's like a mortgage payment, just so that you know, in order to keep DJ with his ABA therapies, I had to earn enough to not only cover my salary, but also cover Cobra insurance. And so I woke up every day with that in my belly and I got to work and you guys, and it took me a long time. If you were to put my story on a timeline compared to other people, it probably wasn't as fast as other people, but you know what? It doesn't matter. The point is, is that I kept going and I went all in every day and I showed up to my business every day day I still do because I still wake up every single day with that fire in my belly knowing that not only does the work that I do make a difference but it really does make a difference in the life of my family so you guys if I can ask you one thing that you do is get clear on what you want when you do that everything else kind of falls into place but when it's fuzzy and you start playing the comparison game and you start not believing and you start having doubt and fear in your mind that's when it kind of gets you know uh, uh you, you know you start saying oh i'm on the struggle bus or i'm being challenged right get clear and you work through that because everybody gets challenged you guys everybody rides that struggle bus every once in a while no one is immune to it neither am i but when you're clear, you know how to get back off of it and you know how to keep going forward. So I'm going to stop talking. You guys know that right now I've, I've been retired from the practice of law for a few years now. And um, 
you know, now my job is just to help other people see this too. And hopefully you guys do as well. So let me do a quick screen share. All right. So this is my presentation. So I actually did this presentation for a, um, a Super Saturday here in Miami. And I kind of just fell in love with it because it really is my jam. My jam is not so much teaching you how to do this business. It's more so teaching you why you need to do this business, why you need to give it your all because it is so absolutely incredible what we get to do every single day. And I know it kind of is like a Groundhog's Day every month. Every month you wake up at zero. Every month you got to hit success club. But if you can find the joy in helping people both on the fitness side and on the health side and do that and always fill your cup every single day with your personal development, you can literally rewrite your, your story and your history and, and your vision for your life with this opportunity. So I want to tell you with my experience over the last seven years, what I feel it means to go all in in this business. Now, a lot of people tend to overcomplicate this business with pretty graphics and, and trainings and this, that, and the other. I like to keep it simple because I don't think it needs to be overcomplicated. I just think your heart and your mind need to be in the right place because, and correct me if I'm wrong, when you signed up to be a Beachbody coach, whether it was last week, yesterday, or five years ago, this is probably what you've looked like, right? You are a busy, crazy mom or dad. You have kids hanging off your legs. You have extracurricular activities. You have a job. You need to pack lunches. They play baseball. They're in gymnastics. You have no time to even shower. And somebody, your coach, convinced you that it would be a good idea to add now another job on top of to the mix to become a beach body coach. Am I right? Is this what we look like? Or do we look like this? Right? Yes. Yeah, like we are insane. If you are on this call and if you are listening to the recording and if you are a coach, you are certifiably insane that you with all the crap that we have to deal with in life, you decided to log in buy your challenge pack say you wanted to be a coach all of a sudden you're thrown into a team page it's like chaos people are saying i recruited this person and i have sc59 and it's like what is going on right and you just open a business with all of that going on but here's the thing this business is the answer to almost every life problem that could be presented to you I'm not saying all, but I'm saying most of them, right? This business is the answer. So let's stop treating it like an option, right? The way that I see it and the way that I tell all my new coaches as they come into this environment that's absolutely chaotic, right? You, you, you have this crazy busy life and all of a sudden you're a coach and now you have to start challenge groups. You have to help people. You have to figure out how to invite. What the hell does invite mean? Like you have to do all this stuff, but here's the thing. Just take it all in and consider this simply a new way of life, right? This business opportunity is so special, you guys. And I want you at the end of this call to understand what it means to go all in because it is the solution. If you want to get fit, we got you. If you want to make money, we got you. If you want to be part of a community, we got you. If you want to travel, we got you. If you want to have fun, we got you. I mean, I could keep on. I can listen and listen and listen. Everything, you know, Maslow's, uh, if you guys are into psychology, um, Maslow's uh, hierarchy of needs, right? If you look at that, Google that after this call and see all the hu basic human needs that us as human beings need to survive from basic food, water, shelter, all the way up to the top, to significance, contribution, everything except, I mean, I would, I would consider Shakeology a food. So I would even think that as a human basic need, we need Shakeology, right? But all the human basic needs are covered within this opportunity. You get community, you get support, you get love, recognition, safety. I mean, all of it is covered. So treat it like the answer and not like a like it's an option when you treat it like it's an option 
it, it, the business is not going to be easy, but if you treat it like the answer to all of your problems, I'm telling you guys, it can change your life. So this is the magic question I want you to ask yourself. Are you interested or are you committed? One of my favorite co quotes from Kenneth Blanchard, there's a difference between interest and commitment. When you're interested in something, you do it only when it's convenient. When you're committed to something, you accept no excuses, only results. This is the winning mindset, you guys. When you are committed, you have a winning mindset. When you're interested, these are the times when, you know, if you're interested in something, if it's raining outside, you don't do it. If it's, you know, it's kind of, it's almost the same concept with your fitness, right? If you're not feeling too good, you don't, you don't work out. But think about this, when you work through all the excuses in your fitness, you work through everything that you feel is holding you back, what happens? I mean, if you did Sean Week this week, and you went all in with Sean Week and you freaking just listened to the words that he was saying, like you were committed, you got results, right? Whether it was mental results, I think a lot of us had mental results, right? Because seven days, not really a long time, but I think it changed the game for us mentally. I think that's what's going to happen with Shift Shop, right? So let's all commit to Shift Shop 100%. You're, not only are you going to see changes in your body, and in your and in your mindset, you're going to see changes in your business when you commit 100% to a fitness program. But the same thing goes for your business day in and day out, you guys. Be committed to your business. When you're committed, you set goals, right? You set goals and you work and you fight to achieve them. And even if you miss, you keep pushing. You don't take a step back. You when you say you're going to advance to Emerald or you say you're going to advance to Diamond or you say you're going to hit Success Club, a committed person does it, right? Does it, fights for it. A, a person that's interested, someone says no or someone, you know, they stumble up on a few invites and they throw their hands up. Not you, you guys, you are committed, right? So these are what I believe to be the prerequisites of going all in in your business, Right. If I were to say these 10 things are something you need to have in your back pocket, in your arsenal in order to move your business forward, this is this is the list I would give to you. I've tried to rethink these and say, you know, is, there, is there something I'm missing? And I don't think so. I think if you get all these 10 aligned, some are more important than others then you have what it takes to move the ball forward, to go all in. And when I tell you what it is that, I'm, that you need to go all in with, you're going to be like, that's it? Really? That's why? Yes, it's so simple, you guys. It's not rocket science, but your heart and your mind need to be aligned, right? And, and, and your work ethic, right? So number one, you can articulate your why. This is what I talked about when I was sharing my story. Right now, if you don't know what you're chasing, then you're going to be running around in circles. You're going to feel frustrated, right? Because when your why is crystal clear, and I know a lot of people don't like to say the why, it's, it's an overused term, and I get that, but really when it boils down to, it is what it is. You need to know why you're doing this business because we are part of a volunteer army. People will come and go. You can come and go. Do I want you to? Absolutely not. But you have that prerogative to, 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 to do your business, to not do your business. You can go back to your nine to five. You can live that life and that's okay. But if you want different, if you want freedom, if you want the, the, the binds of financial um, strain broken for you and for your family, or even physical strains broken for you and your family, then you've got to know why you're doing this business because it's easy to walk away from if you don't, right? Your why has to be powerful. It's got to be deep. It usually involves your faith. It usually involves your finances. It usually involves your family. I call it the three Fs, right? Think about what it is that you want and write it down and remind yourself. And if you don't wake up tomorrow with that fire in your belly, then that's probably not your why. Remember that. Number two, you got to believe. And this is where I've been preaching the most right now, because I think this is where a lot of people, there's a gap between in this whole belief system of our business. I'll say you have to believe in three things. You got to believe in our company. You got to believe in what we do, our products, and you got to believe in yourself, right? Do you guys agree with that? Yep. Okay. Now, if I were to, and I can't see all of you because I have my screen share, but if I were to ask you, raise your hand if you believe 
that this business opportunity works? Raise your hand. And I'm hopeful that almost everybody raised their hand because it does, right? I'm proof that it works. Joan is proof that it works. Maybe some of you, I don't know you, but maybe some of you on this call are proof that this business works, right? You're making an income. You're seeing things happen for you and for your family, right? Now, for new coaches that are on this call, or maybe some coaches that have, have ridden that struggle bus that we talked about a little bit earlier, where there's a, a missing link is that you believe this business works for other people but you don't believe it works for you. And when you don't believe that it works for you, then you're not gonna work to your full potential. You gotta believe that it will work for you, not just for me, not just for Joan, not just for the other leaders of the company. You have to believe that it works for you because I know coaches, whether they're on my team or just from meeting other coaches in the network that are six months in, a year in, and are making real strides, real strides in their business. So I know this opportunity is alive and well. It is amazing, right? And what an amazing time it is to be a coach where we're about to head into Summit, where I know new products are going to be announced. We're gonna get some new fitness programs. Trust me, I have no idea what they are. They are so tight-lipped. But we're about to venture into the United Kingdom. You know, like a whole new world. You know what I'm going to sing? Right? Like it is amazing to be a coach. But right now, number one, you got to know your why. And you guys, number two, believe that this opportunity will work for you. Not just for everybody else, but for you too. Number three, you make a decision. And oh my God, what a great day to talk about decision. Joan, did you read uh, Ruth Schrauner's post on the wall? Ah, I even, I splattered that thing all over my teen pages. And what she said right before, um, right, right, right at the beginning of this post, and this is the coach that just went superstar diamond, who's awesome. She's like, all I did was make a decision. And I'm like, yes. It is so true, you guys. Everything in this business involves a decision. Everything. Your fitness involves a decision. Your drinking that shake involves a decision. Your hitting success club involves a decision, right? I think maybe, you guys, maybe once in seven years have I been able to hit success club by accident. <laughs> maybe once because of maybe a lead ordered you know, a challenge pack and I got some points and then maybe, you know, like s random things happen and you hit success. But other than that, to this month, to last month, to the month after that, it has been a conscious decision for me to hit success club, right? And I make a conscious decision to always hit success club 10. Why? Because I know that if I hit 10, I have more opportunities to have more kick butt coaches come onto my team the next month. Everything is a decision. You have to make a decision to be successful in this business. You have to make a decision to go to events. Everything involves a decision. You have to decide that you are going to do it versus not going to do it. You make the decision tonight to go all in. Yes? Number four, you have to think big. This is the one where I need you guys to, to like bear with me here. So many coaches think big is like hitting diamond or think big is like, hitting even five-star, hitting even elite. You got to think bigger than that. You got to think vision. You have to think legacy. What is the legacy that you want to leave with this business? Because this can be a legacy type thing that you do because Beachbody, yes, can provide so much, but it's also a platform for so much, right? Do you want to do charity? Do you want to have a non-for-profit? Do you want to do big things like for your kids? Do you, I mean, what is it? Think that big. Because when you, when you place your value on a goal, trust me, it's nice to hit elite. It is nice to advance to diamond, five-star, ten-star, even superstar diamond. It's nice. But on Friday morning, you wake up and nobody cares. And nobody cares. But guess what? Your kids will care that mommy wakes up every day and does something really special for them and knows that their mommy is going to work towards a huge goal for her family or daddy for his family, right? So you have to think bigger than a goal 
in order to really, really move the ball in a big way in this business. Number five, you have to be willing to get uncomfortable. But this is like so many people are like, hey, I don't want to. I don't want, I, you know, here's my comfort zone and I'm comfortable and I'm comfy there and it's warm and cozy. But guess what, you guys? Getting out of your comfort zone, I mean, that's life, right? Like if you want to grow, you have to. It's not just in this business, right? If you want to become a better spouse if you want to become a better parent if you want to become a better public speaker if you want to do anything even at work if you want to become a better you know get that promotion you got to get uncomfortable so it's not like i'm telling you to do anything totally out of the ordinary if you want to grow in life and in this business you've got to get comfortable in being uncomfortable you have to have conversations i use the hashtag siubc with my team I did it on a call the other day. Suck it up, buttercup. If you want that girl on your team, go ask her. If you want to sell that challenge pack, go ask that person. Like, just do it. Share your stories. Get vulnerable. Um, hopefully, if, if you guys are going to be at Summit and, and you get to go to Ignite, like I'm going to do a presentation on vulnerability and how that's your value, right? Sharing your life stories is what brings value to your, to your niche market right? That's how you connect in a human level to people. And you've got to just stop sharing the shape picture and share the stories of your life, right? That's what's going to connect with people that builds trust and trust then creates the sales that you need to hit success and to advance in rank. Number six, that you are relentlessly consistent. And I tie that to number seven, that you're patiently persistent. You guys, someone that is Consistent will make it to SC4 every single month, but someone that is relentlessly consistent and persistent will make it to SC6 every month or more, right? You have to be consistent because consistency is what builds trust, right? If you, the, our business, if, take a look at your customers, right? And in the, in the recent conversations that you've had with, I would say the majority of your customers, what we do, fitness, Shakeology, clean eating, all that jazz is usually like a last ditch effort for our customers, right? They've done everything. They've probably used other MLM products. They've probably done HCG or even had weight loss surgery. And, 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 you know, they come to us because they don't know what else to do. And, but they do understand that if you work hard and you eat healthy, then you can get healthy, right? And that's what we do. What we do is not easy, but they know that it works, right? People need to be able to trust their coach. People need to see that you show up to your fitness every day. That's huge in our business because that's what creates trust. Some people, you've got trust built in, right? Uh, your mom, your sister, your brother, your siblings, your aunts, your uncles, they trust you already. But that cold market that is looking at the landscape of fitness coaches out there and they see you as a little engine that could, that wakes up every day and works out and, and is inspirational and motivating and is eating healthy and meal planning and you do that day in, day out, relentlessly, you're going to have trust with those people, Right. You also have to be consistent in building your business as well, just like in your fitness, right? Every day, you got to show up to your business. You got to show up to your team. You have to be consistent in that, but you have to be patiently persistent as well. And the key here is patience. Like Gary V said last year at Summit, I, I mean, it plays in my head all day long. Patience, 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 right? You don't want to plant a seed. Well, who said it the other day? And then like, you know, oh yes, Kim Carver, of course, the, the coach whisperer. You plant a seed, right? And that seed is a, a new baby coach, right? They just signed up. And then you're like, you rip the seed out of the ground because you want them to move faster than, you know, the, and so you just rip it out and you never give it a chance to succeed and to grow and to water and to mentor and to, you know what I mean? So you have to be patient, not only with your coaches, be also be patient in the growth of your business. And hopefully at the end of the call, I have a, a quote that really symbolizes this perfectly. But our business, our, our compensation structure, you guys, is long-term based. 
it rewards those that are patiently persistent, right? We don't have a structure where you can sponsor 20 people and earn a bonus and then the next month you're like, you can't sponsor anyone so you make zero. No, ours is like the little engine that could. You keep doing the vitals, you keep bringing coaches on, you keep training those coaches, you keep hitting success if you stay in phase one and little by little, that income starts to grow. What's cool about our, our opportunity is that the income will maintain itself, right? Yes, there's drops. Yes, there's spurts. You know, during times of the month, it grows. But you're not ever going to drop to zero if you, if you keep working, which to me is very, very cool. And, I, and, I, and that's security to me, right? So I will work my tushy off for two years to get to that, you know, $500, $1,000, $2,000 mark and know that if I stay in phase one and I keep going, that income is going to stay there. It's going to fluctuate, but that's okay, right? But that's okay. It's not going to drop down to zero. I never want that to happen. So be patient in that, you guys. Keep, ch keep churning, keep working, and once you get there, you're going to see what I mean. Number eight, you rule your mindset, right? Whew. This is the big one right now. You got to, you got to, got to, got to, got to delve into PD and you got to stay there, right? I remember going to these events um, when I was a, a, a year in my first summit, 2012, and I would see coach after coach after coach say, it's all personal development. It's all personal development. It's all personal development. And I used to roll my eyes at them because I'm like, what? I'm not messed up. You know what I mean? Like, I don't need someone some self-help book telling me what to do or how to think like I got this until you start doing it and I know you guys do it but do it and and really work on it because I can go to a million events I could read a million books but if I'm not really taking action on that then it's all time wasted right rule your mindset means that when you feel yourself kind of losing energy you feel yourself getting into a fear-based mentality, you feel yourself saying, I can't, I can't, I can't, that you are able to snap out of it. That's my thing. You have the decision yourself to snap out of it, to get back and immerse yourself into personal development and keep moving forward. Number nine and number 10, understanding that you are the business owner, you are the CEO, and once you start bringing coaches into your team, once you start um, doing this business, you have to lead. Number one, you lead yourself. Number two, you lead others and inspire others, right? These are my prerequisites to the business, right? If you can understand these, and of course, number 10, that's an hour-long call, um, but it, it, it is one where leadership is a skill that you learn. You're not born that way, right? So invest in your leadership building skills along with your personal development skills. But you guys, these, this list is what I believe are the prerequisites to going all in. If you understand this and are willing to invest in these 10 things, then you are ready to go all in and you are ready to grow this business and you are ready to change your life. So don't freak out because the next thing will blow your mind. Not really, because it's super simple. These are the three things that you have to do to go all in. Number one, is you have to get to work on your mind, you have to get to work on your body, and you have to get to work with people, right? An investment in your personal development is the best investment you can make. Boy, did I did not realize that this was true until I went to my first personal development seminar, and it was with Danny Johnson. And I've been to many since then, but you guys, there's a, re there's a reason why our super Saturdays are like every three months or there's an event every three months, whether it's, you know, success club trip, summit, leadership, super Saturdays the way. Why? Because they, they build us up with energy, right? When we're there, right? Because every three months you kind of start seeing a dip in energy and then boom, there's an event and we get this. So imagine if also during those times you are, you are immersing yourself in personal development. I, invest in going to personal development events. I'm not saying you have to do this, but read your books, you guys. Listen to them on audio. Really, really understand the importance of developing your mind. You cannot grow this business leaps and bounds 
being the person you were yesterday. You cannot inspire and move people and lead people being the person you were five years ago. You need to grow in proportion to the size of your goals, right? John Maxwell says, if you're not growing, you are dying, right? You have to invest number one and primarily into your personal development. Number two, your body. I couldn't find a good quote to this, so I just made one up. Being proof the products work consistently is how you build and earn trust. You guys, that's our job. We're health and fitness coaches. I'm not the in perfect shape, nor do I claim to be. In fact, my brand is not so in shape, right? It's this whole fit-ish lifestyle. It works for me and for my people. But guess what? Everybody knows I show up every single day, right? Every single day I do my workout. Every single day I, work, I drink my shake because that builds trust. I can't begin to tell you how many people come to me on a monthly basis whose coaches have quit, whose coaches no longer are working out. You guys, those people are going somewhere. They're going to the coaches that are working out, that are, wor uh, that are drinking their shake and that are building their businesses. Don't stop, don't stop. People need you and they're watching you. Okay, don't stop. That's how you build trust. People, this quote, if you can understand what it means, the business and, and growing an organization, it really, everything kind of falls into place when you understand this. And it took a conversation with Barbie Decker at the time, now Barbie Kalev, who asked me simply when I was telling her how frustrated I was that I felt like I was the only one, you know, rank advancing and I was the only one earning an income way back in 2012. And she said, well, what are you doing for them? And I said, not much. I took it for granted that I ran with this business and I didn't really need someone telling me what to do. And I realized that if I wanted to have a team, I needed people on my team, not just, you know, the figures in the back office that filled gaps. I needed to help people be successful, right? And, and, and that can come in so many shapes and forms and ways and trainings and calls and mentorship. And I don't know, but all it is is taking that one person that wants to work this business and helping them, right? And just helping them. And that's when I realized, and that's what I saw. Oh, that's the two, that's the key to growing this business is if you can, you can have everything in life that you want, if you will just help other people get what they want. And that really is the key to building this business. So now let's have a gut check moment. Are you working in minimums or maximums? Cause if you're all in, right? Cause now we have the prerequisites, you know what you have to go all in with, right? Your mind, your body and people. Now, are you working in minimums or maximums in those three areas? So you have to look at yourself. In PD, I bet a lot of us are working in minimums. I know I go through times where I'm in maximums with PD. That's when I know I need to get to a live event. Um, and that's when I get to my maximum and then I'm somewhere in the middle. But when I am like on maximums with personal development, my business is on fire, right? When I am on maximum, with my fitness and my nutrition, my business is on fire. Am I, am I wrong here, Joan, right? No, when I'm eating like crap and, and not working out consistently, guess what? My energy goes down, people sense that, even my social media's off, like it all is intertwined, you guys. And then maximums in terms of people. Am I trying to hit SC6? Or am I shooting for SC20? Now, some of these numbers might scare you. I don't know. Some people in the network hit SC numbers that I can't, be, can't even like wrap my head around. To me, a maximum is you know 20 to 30, right? Those are my maximums, right? Or, are you or am I just setting the goal of SC6 and maybe recruiting one coach or maybe not recruiting one coach? Or am I trying to recruit as many coaches as I can? Am I, trying, am I having all the conversations I possibly can, or just the minimum, right? If you're asking yourself, what's the minimum amount of work that I have to do to hit success club, then you're definitely not working at your potential, right? So don't let small thinking cut your life down to size. Think big, aim high, act bold, and see how big you can blow up your life. I love that quote. 
to, to, to symbolize this. So this is one of those things that you guys have to ask yourself, am I putting in minimums or maximums in those three areas? And lastly, um, this is the quote that I was referencing a little bit earlier. It's amazing how people think four years is a long time to succeed in a business, but think it's all right to stay broke at a job for 40 years. So that picture was taken on my sister's 40th birthday. Monica in the green bikini was my secretary at work <laughs> and we're pointing at our office building. Uh, we're on the um, Biscayne Bay. It's like this beautiful, on this beautiful boat. And we were having this com this conversation um, that if it wasn't for this opportunity, we'd both still be sitting behind those glass windows, hating life and not enjoying you know, the fruits of our labor with this business and how, you know, this business, while it can take four years, three years for some, two years for some, for me, four or five, for maybe some others, it'll be six or seven, but how that time is being well spent, you guys, because if it wasn't for this, then I'd be retiring at 65 or man, if I took a look in that office right now, a lot of the guys that were attorneys when I was there that were in their seventies, they're probably still working. Right. And, and we're here and we're helping people with their health and fitness. And we're, you know, we're, we have life changing incomes or the potential to earn life changing incomes. Take that seriously. You guys grow this business, go all in, fall in love with it. Like I have. And, and, and whether you get there faster than me or slower than me, it doesn't matter. As long as you're moving the ball forward, like you're going to get there, right? You're going to get there. So that's it. I'm going to stop share. If I can get out of here. I love when she goes, that's it. Like I had, <laughs> I mean, seriously, I had chills like multiple times. I was like, I kept going, right, chills, right, chills. <laughs> <laughs> because it is, it's so true. I mean, like ugh, that quote, just like, who cares how long it takes you? If it takes you 10 years, who cares? I mean, it's better than the alternative. And I don't know. I have like four pages of notes here. So there's that as well. But um, I love how like it was at the event. It was at your first Super Saturday that you got that idea of like, okay, I just need to make Success Club. And by the way, Success Club does seem like it was way harder back then. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, you know, the importance of getting to events again, guys, get to events. Um, but also just like I've been talking to a lot of people lately about like their why. But I think it's even more important to know what's next because it changes as you achieve those certain things. And, um, you know, for me, it was leaving my job. So I did that. And then it was, um, getting him to leave his job. So we did that, but now it's like, okay, then it was like, now what? And for a little while you get lost, but then you, you have to readjust. And now I do have one that like, I jump out of bed and I'm like, I gotta get to work. <laughs> so, um, doing that. What else? Oh, one thing I did want to ask you, what did your schedule look like? I know this is a question that everybody has. What did your schedule look like when you worked full time? Um, um, it's funny because this is the question I get a lot, yeah. um, clearly because I did work this business simultaneously with practicing mm -hmm. law, um, and having two little babies at home. Like I'll throw that into the mix. It wasn't easy at all by any stretch of the imagination. I, and because I was crystal clear on my why, it seems like a blur, but I did try to use my time as um, best that I could, right? I would wake up and I, I, I'm not gonna lie to you, right? I'm not gonna sit here and say it was easy, that it, I sugarcoated it, I mean it was, and sugarcoated. I woke up at 4.30 in the morning to work out, and back then when I was still practicing and, and doing Beachbody, the, the, we didn't have 30 minute workouts. We didn't have 25 or 22 minute workouts. It was P90X. An hour. And it was, and my first program, full program was Insanity the Asylum. That game day is like an hour and 20 minutes long. And that was my first program, you know? So it wasn't as easy um, to even get your fitness in back then. Right. So there was like these major sacrifices that I was making. 4.30 in the morning, I was up. I was working out. Um, before I would jump in the shower, I was quickly answering messages that I had received um, from the night before. On the way to work, it was either a call with a coach or a customer or personal development on audio. It was then 
uh, in my one hour commute on the way to the office that I listened to Jim Rohn's building your network marketing business. If you haven't listened to that, highly recommend it. It was really what opened my eyes to this, this thing, like this world. I didn't understand this world before, you know, I didn't understand this whole network marketing thing before Beachbody or any of this. So that one is a really good audio. Anyway, um, whenever I would go to the restroom, <laughs> I would take my phone with me on, I, I mean, I don't know if you guys follow me, but I used to smoke cigarettes. So on my cigarette breaks, I would take, I don't smoke anymore. I post about that. You guys can see that. And I do it often because that's one of my vulnerabilities. Um, but on cigarette breaks, I would work this business on my lunch break. I would we, I would be with Monica and we would sit there and as much as we could. And it was that it was just, and I say it a lot. I have a blog post about it where I felt like it was on 24 hours a day. Mm -hmm. Right. I was just go, 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 go. There was even a time and I'll stop there. I'm, I just want to show you that. Yes, it does take sacrifice. It was little spurts of energy throughout the day that got me through, but it was like consistent spurts. Like I never just because I had a hugely, you know, busy day that I never, that I didn't show up to my business. I still showed up. Yes, right. Yes. But there was even a, one of our first trainings that we ever took part of. I don't, I'll never forget this. I go to sleep early. Like this is really late for me. The training, the calls were at 10 30 at night. Like who in their right mind does that? And what, you know what I would do? I would go to sleep at nine and set my alarm for 1025 and get up and listen to the call and then go back to sleep. Like that's how badly I wanted it. Like it was, it was insane. Um, I would, one time I, you guys, like one time at bank camp, I, one time I went to, I went to Vegas for summit and didn't tell my boss. He calls me. And he's like, where are you? I'm like, I'm in Las Vegas. Oh, I, thought, I go, I thought I told you. <laughs> yeah, don't try that. But it was like insane. Like I was, I, I took risk and I, and I, I did it. My, um, I wasn't blocked at work on social media, but my sister was. So if you have that problem, like Becky had to schedule all, all her posts. Um, it, it was quite the challenge for her. She would have to like run into the parking lot to answer messages but you know, you just, you got to do what you got to do. When the vision is pulling you, you literally, you figure it out. And that's, that's my answer. I don't have a, I didn't have a schedule. It looked different every single day. Um, but I did get my workout in and I got, you know, a couple minutes of the business in as, as much as I could. I mean, like, does that not sound exactly yeah. like what I did? Yeah. <laughs> like exactly yeah. to a T? Like if you went and watched recordings of me yeah. telling people my schedule, it's like the same thing. I told her when she first started coaching and as the, as the workouts would get shorter and shorter, I'm like, all they're doing is just making the workout shorter so coaches that are working in the business can work. <laughs> can have more time. <laughs> it's true. Um, well, thank you so much. Does anybody else have a question? I don't think I don't think I saw any. All I saw is like it's tons love, and tons of love, love and praise in here. I was reading it to see if there was any questions. Yeah, they yeah. just love you, of course. <laughs> um, thank you so much for your time, Christina. I really appreciate it. And I, you know, this call I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and put it up on the YouTube channel and then in the team page, you guys rewatch this, re-listen to it, listen to it in the background while you're driving or like whatever. Cause it's such great information. The points are like, it's, it's dead on. Um, and I just, I, I really appreciate your time tonight. It is absolutely my pleasure. I can't wait to see you guys at Summit. I know, I'm so excited. Yeah. I'm like, I can't wait for Summit. Is that weird? Big <laughs> easy. No, it's awesome. It's like two weeks away. I, it's we, so close. We bought our flights today. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> I woke up and I was like, oh my God, I haven't gotten tickets yet. <laughs> anyway. Okay, let's do this. <laughs> All right. We'll see you soon. Thank you, Christina. Bye, you guys. Bye, nice. everyone. Bye. Have a good night.